Is it possible that $300 printers might be gone for good? And honestly, would that be such a bad thing? Welcome to the studio. With the new tariffs hitting imported 3D printers, the cost of some of your favorite machines could be going up and fast. But in the middle of all this chaos, there's a group of companies building something different. Professional grade machines made right here in the USA. We've all come to expect a lot from 3D printers. Speed, precision, features, and we've gotten used to getting it very cheap. That's largely because companies like Bamboo Lab, Creality, Anycubic, and even Elegoo, who make fantastic machines, don't get me wrong, have been able to produce them at scale overseas with lower costs. But with new US tariffs potentially raising the price of imported 3D printers, the playing field is starting to shift. We've already started seeing the effects of these macroeconomic changes in real time. Some imported 3D printers have doubled price literally overnight. Just recently, we saw a major price increase on Bamboo Lab printers at Matter Hackers, and there's little doubt that tariffs, shipping costs, and global manufacturing pressures are playing a role. These may or may not be small bumps, but they could be a sign that the pricing landscape for consumer 3D printers is shifting. And that's why it's more important than ever to look at what's being built here at home and why these machines are priced the way that they are. Now, let's be honest. American-made printers are not cheap. They never were, but they are built with a different mission. Long-term reliability, premium support, and close to home accountability. And that last one, that might be the most underrated feature of all. If you live in the USA and when you buy from a company that builds here in the USA, you're not submitting a support ticket that unfortunately and often gets ignored. You're calling someone who lives in the same country you do, often just a few time zones away, someone who actually helped design, test, or maybe even build the machine that you're working with. And part of that higher cost, it comes from the fact that these machines aren't built to be disposable. It's important to remember, not all 3D printers are built the same and that they're not easily compared by price alone. I know some folks don't like to hear that, especially when we're all out there trying to find the best deals, but it's the same reason that not every wrench from Harbor Freight stacks up against ones from Snap-on. There's a difference between tools meant for occasional weekend use and tools that are built to perform day in and day out under pressure. As an example, it's true for electric generators too. You can buy a $300 unit that runs in a pinch, or you can buy a commercial grade generator that costs five and 10 times more because it's designed for continuous operation, not just emergencies. 3D printers are no different. Some are built to last through years of demanding production environments. Others, they're more like disposable appliances. And that's not a knock on either one. It just depends on what you need. And of course, there are exceptions to this rule. We've all found that one really cheap tool that will likely outlive us. In fact, if you found a cheap tool that turned out to be a total gem or a diamond in the rough, drop that in the comments. We'd all love to hear about them. Back to 3D printing. Take Lulzbot, for example. Their tool heads aren't $35 off-the-shelf clones from Amazon. Their quick change tool heads can run anywhere from $300 to around $1,000 each, depending on the configuration. Now, why? That's because they're using Bond Tech extruders, the best in the industry, and Slice Engineering hot ends, which are trusted in some of the most demanding print environments out there. It's the kind of design choice that doesn't just work, they last. And when something needs replacing, you're not tossing out the whole printer, you're fixing what matters, and you're keeping everything else running strong. And I know this personally. I have spoken to folks at each of these companies Every single one, no exception. These teams are passionate, smart, and genuinely dedicated to the future of 3D printing. Now, before I jump in and highlight a few of these US-made printer companies, and even a filament one, I'm gonna ask a few dangerous questions for the comments, all right? Here they go. Question number one. Would you still buy a 3D printer if the price doubled, but it was made in the USA? Do you care where printers are made? Question number two. Is it time to just stop buying cheap 3D printers altogether? Are they doing good or harm to our industry? Question number three. If your favorite imported 3D printer suddenly cost $1,000 or $2,000, would you still use it or recommend it? Question number four. What's more important to you, supporting US businesses or jobs or just getting the best deal? Again, do you care where your 3D printer is made? Five. Do you think American-made printers are overpriced or do you think that they're fairly priced for what they offer? 
Now, this last one, which is probably a pretty big deal, I get comments about this one a lot more than any other. Question number six, have you ever called tech support for a 3D printer? And was it foreign or domestic? And how did it go? Seriously, drop the answers to any one of those questions or all of them in the comments below. The first company that we're gonna talk about is Lulzbot. Now, Lulzbot has been in the open source game for years. They are known for their workhorse TAS line and modular design philosophy. They serve makers, educators, industrial, agriculture, government, and even researchers who want freedom to customize. They build and assemble everything in North Dakota, and they've doubled down on keeping their machines serviceable, hackable, and durable. They even write their own software in-house. The next company we're gonna talk about is Wuxin. Now, Wuxin is a relatively new player focused on approachable and friendly machines for small businesses, classrooms, and creators. They've got an amazing passion for 3D printing, and you can feel it when you talk to them on the phone. They're all about lowering the barrier to entry, and they do all of their manufacturing and design work in-house right in Colorado. Wuxin loves user experience, and that's really what they're focused on. The next company is Fusion 3. Have you heard of Fusion 3? Fusion 3 is best known for their enclosed industrial level printers like the F200. These are fast, precise machines built to run production parts day in and day out. They focus on reliability, speed, and rock solid customer support. If you're printing for a business, these folks are worth a serious look. I would highly recommend giving them a call and seeing what they are about. In fact, we have a lot more content coming on this F200, so make sure you are subscribed and hit that bell to get notified. Also, while you're down there, hit that like button too. All right, the next company, Formlabs. Born out of MIT, Formlabs revolutionized desktop SLA printing. Their form series of printers are elegant, they're professional, and they're widely used in dental, jewelry, and engineering fields, among many. This is a company that brought high-res resin 3D printing to the desktop before most people even knew what SLA was. Now, we have their Form 4 sitting right back here with some exciting content coming on it. This is the best tech that there is right now, and I can't wait to share it with you. And it's not just printers that are being made here in the United States. Polymaker, the world's largest 3D printing filament manufacturer, is now producing filament right here on American soil. They recently opened a full-scale manufacturing facility and warehouse in Houston, Texas, hiring an entirely local team and committing to building the highest quality filament in the country. Millions of dollars in custom high-tech automation, and I got to go film it. In fact, I was actually the first content creator to step inside that facility, and I've got a full walkthrough video of their filament production lines coming very soon. If you thought top-tier filament only came from overseas, you're gonna wanna see how things are changing. Polymaker is investing big in US manufacturing, and it's just the beginning. You're gonna wanna see this video. It will blow your mind. I don't know how other companies are going to compete here. It's just amazing the amount of tech that they've put into this place. Anyway, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Seriously, I'll be dropping that video anytime. Now, if you are curious for more details and the specifics of why some of these machines cost what they do, don't speculate, ask. Call them, email them. Every one of these companies have people who will pick up the phone and walk you through what they built and why. They care about this stuff. And if you've got questions, they've got answers. Also, if you've got reasons why you think these machines cost more, drop them in the comments below. I'm going to invite all of these companies to come here and read and engage in the comments. Now, I only chose a few USA-made companies in this video, and if you wanna see your favorites in another video, drop the companies below that you like, and don't forget to tag them. We'll do a full breakdown of all USA-made companies and their products in another video. Buying American-made isn't just about economics. It's about supporting real people doing hard, valuable work to push this technology forward. So whether you're shopping for your next 3D printer or you're just watching the space evolve, keep an eye on what's being built here. If you found this video helpful or thought-provoking, hit that like button, consider subscribing, and drop a comment below if you've had an experience with any of these brands. A huge thanks to our YouTube members and Patreon supporters. I could not make this content without you. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you in the next one. Seriously, answer all those questions. Drop some comments, like, subscribe, all of that, and uh, I'll invite these companies to come over and engage with you. All right.